going through those particular uh, dispensations. This will give you a greater understanding in presenting the gospel to people and also will give you clarity in your own particular life. Because the word of God says, keep your finger here, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2 a moment. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Glory be to Jesus. And we look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. And it tells us in verse 15. It says, be, jealous, be diligent to present yourself approved of God. A study to show yourself approved to who? To God. Not to argue with people, <laughs> but approved of God. Can you say amen? amen? Glory be to God. It says, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Either you can rightly divide the word of truth or you can wrongly divide the word of truth. That's where you need to know the different times and seasons and purposes of God. You need to understand dispensations, okay? These particular things, you need to understand the different ages and this will give you a greater understanding of the word of God. Can you say amen? And we go over to Genesis chapter one and it says, in the beginning, God, God was in the beginning. Can you say amen? God is not what you call created. God is God. In the word God here, you see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You see the word Elohim, which gives us the understanding of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost of one God. This is a mystery that we will get to understand later on. This is something you believe. There are certain things that you have to understand that you just believe. You may not have any understanding of it, but you just believe it because it is truth. Can you say amen? It's in the word of God. It's truth. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now notice the heavens and the earth. Heavens is plural, and we see the earth. And over in Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, praise God forevermore, hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1, and we look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Colossians 1, 16, it says, For by him all things were created, all things were created that are in heaven, and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities and powers, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Can you say amen? And here we see the creation of what we call the heavens, or in the heavenly. And this is where God created all kind of different creatures. He created angels. You get a look at certain things. Turn over to the book of Revelation a moment. I think we want to go to Revelation chapter, uh, chapter 9 a moment. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Let's look at Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. God created angelic beings. There's all kind of different types of angelic beings. And he created what you call living creatures, okay? He created the heavens, all the different planets, all the different stars. Everything was created by God. Can you say amen? And here we see in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and nothing was made without him. Can you say amen? Here you see the preexistent Christ, his divinity, and we see the Holy Spirit and the Spirit. Spirit of the Lord, God said, and it was done. God said, and it was done. Not only on the earth, but also in the heavens. Now, notice in Revelation chapter 9, because we're talking about living creatures. And they were created in what they call their perfect form. They were made perfect, just like certain angels. They were made perfect. Can you say amen? 
It says, then the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star falling from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Now, what is the bottomless pit? The bottomless pit is what we call a compartment of hell, a compartment of hell. Hell was not created for man. Turn over to Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, a moment. Glory be to God. Matthew chapter 25. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. Amen. Matthew chapter 25. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 25, and we look at verse 44. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. No, not 44. Just a moment here. Let me stand up so I can get a better view of this here. Hallelujah. And we look at verse 41. Matthew 25, 41. Okay. And then it says in verse 41, Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Now notice, hell was pro was made for the devil and his angels. Okay? Hell was not prepared for man. But man goes to hell if they've not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now let me give you uh, some understanding of this. There are what we call five compartments of hell. I think if we had the board, it would be much easier to see, but I'm just going to have to tell you about it right now. Can you say amen? Five compartments of hell. Okay. Hell is in the realm of the spirit realm. It's in the earth, but it's in the realm of the spirit. Just like certain things are in the realm that may be on earth, but they are invisible to us. These are things you and I cannot see with our natural eyes unless the Lord open up our eyes to see in the realm of the spirit. Right now, if God would open up our eyes to, receive, to see in the spirit, we would see God's holy angels. We would see demons. We would see Satan's angels. We would see living creatures. You will see some living creatures that are of God, and we'll see some living creatures that are of the evil one. Can you say amen? And when man sinned against God, I'm talking about Adam and Eve, he had a new father who was the devil. And being his man's new father, man was judged with the devil. You see, we are judged with the devil when we are unsaved because man died spiritually from God. OK, and spiritually from God means separation. But during that particular time, God still loved man so much that God had what you call covenants with man that provided healing, that provided um, what you call supplies blessings in other particular areas of man's particular life. Okay? That's how much God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to save man. Okay? To save man from the judgment that was to come on this particular earth. And the devil's already been judged. There's no hope for Satan and demons and living creatures that followed Satan, okay? They are already judged. Demons know that. Sometimes you cast out demons. Demons will, will, will say, you can see it in the Bible. Jesus, have you come to torment us before our time? They know they have a time, and they know when that time comes, that's when judgment comes upon them. And they will be thrown into one place in hell called the lake of fire and brimstone. You see this in Revelation chapter 20. Keep your fingers in Revelation chapter 9, but look at Revelation chapter 20. Praise God forevermore. And here you see a compartment of hell. Glory be to God. Revelation chapter 
20, and we look at verse 10, Revelation 20, verse 10. It says, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Underline that. That's one of the compartments of hell. Okay? The lake of fire and brimstone. Okay? This is where the devil will be cast into the lake and fire of brimstone. So will be the beast in the book of Revelation and the false prophet, along with other angels that followed Satan, along with other living creatures. So that's one of the compartments of hell. Here in Revelation chapter 20, verse 1, it says, Then I saw an angel, one angel coming down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon and the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit. Number two, we see the bottomless pit. That is another compartment of hell. You see one angel coming down from heaven. And notice it says he had the key to the bottomless pit. Okay. And Key represents authority, authority, authority that has been given by God. OK, and this is the end of Satan. OK, when he is thrown in the bottomless pit and notice what it said over there. And I think I better read this. It always makes me feel good. It says, was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That is the final, the final fate of Satan and demons. Tormenting day and night forever and ever. This is what you call eternal judgment. Eternal judgment. Can you say amen? And... When you think about eternal judgment, you cannot put time on it, a time frame on it. It's just what it is. It is forever and ever. Can you say amen? So here we see two compartments of hell. We see the lake of fire and brimstone. And we see also the bottomless pit. Can you say amen? Now over in... Revelation chapter 9, we look there and we started verse 1. It says, Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star falling from heaven to earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Okay, that's the authority of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. Now, this is doing what we call the tribulation period. All right. He opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Okay. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth. Now, these are spirit beings. Okay. That are coming out of the bottomless pit. You're going to get a look at them. It says, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. In other words, this is consistent torment. Can you say amen? And here's how they look. Verse 7. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold. Now notice it says something like gold. Not gold, but something like gold. In other words, not really gold. Can you say amen? And their faces were like the faces of men. This is how these particular creatures look. They had hair like women's hair. And their teeth was like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. 
And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. Okay. And they had as a king over them, the, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, or which means destruction or destroyer. But in the Greek, he was known as Apollon. One woe is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after these particular things. Now, in their original creation by God, they were created perfectly. But now they look like monsters. Okay? Praise God. The tribulation period has not started yet. Okay? In what they call eschatology, the study of the, of the last days, you have those who are what we call pre-trib. Pre-trib means that we don't go through the tribulation. Okay? In Lifeline, we teach that. That we don't have to go through the tribulation. Okay? But then you got some other groups who teach what you call the mid-trib. Mid-trib is we go to what you call a uh, maybe halfway through the tribulation and then we are raptured. Okay? Raptured means to go up. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Then you have those which are called the trib trip is that we have to go all the way through the tribulation. Okay. You have certain ones believe that the tribulation is going on now. No. And some of them base it upon COVID. See, COVID is what you call pestilence. Pestilence has come over the earth since man has fallen, all different types of pestilence. Are you all following what I'm saying? But during the tribulation period, it will be greater. There will be all types of pestilence upon the earth. Can you say amen as that we know it? All right. But you and I don't have to be afraid because when you look in the book of Thessalonians, when you look at Jesus coming back to get his church, OK, we meet him in the air. And when we meet him in the air, we go with him. Can you say amen? Now, the difference between what we call Jesus coming to get his church and when he comes to execute judgment, coming back as the king of kings and the Lord of lords, when he comes back as the king of kings and Lord of lords, Read Revelation 19 on your own. And I suggest that you read Revelation. You don't have to uh, understand it because certain things are written, parenthetical, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But even those who have been studying it for all their life, they still don't know it. And no one knows the time. No one knows the date, et cetera, et cetera. But the difference when Jesus comes back from his church is that when he comes back for the church, we meet him in the air. When he comes back to the earth to rule as the king of kings and lord and lord, his foot will touch the earth. Where he actually comes back to the earth and sets up his earthly kingdom. Can you say amen? But if you want to tribulate, help yourself. I never get into arguments with people concerning this particular area. Okay, so I'm going to tribulate. Just tribulate on. Can you say amen? But as far as I'm concerned, we will meet the Lord in the air. Can you say amen? And we will forever be with the Lord. That's what the scripture says. Can you say amen? Now, in the beginning, these particular creatures were perfectly created. But when they followed the devil, they rebelled against God and followed the devil, they changed their whole, what you call, I hate to use the word, but continents changed. Okay? Because they followed Satan. Not only will you see these types of creatures as you read through the book of Revelation, you'll see some also other demonic creatures. Okay? And there's all kinds of demonic creatures. 
all kinds. I mean, some of you want to see in the spirit world, that's good, but you're not going to just see angels. You're going to see all kind of stuff, <laughs> okay? And when that does happen, when you see certain demonic creatures, God will give you a, a real spirit of boldness, okay? A real spirit of boldness so that you will cast them out and not fellowship with them <laughs> okay but you will cast them out in Jesus' name amen when it uh, when you come against demonic powers there's all kind of demonic powers and over the years I've seen all kind of different creatures okay I've saw all types of what you call spirits from the kingdom of darkness as we have come against them in where we go and minister and in the different places that God has sent us, okay? And a boldness will rise up in you, holy boldness. That's because you have the Holy Spirit who is in you, okay? And you will cast them out in Jesus' name. Even if your knees are knocking and your teeth is chattering, you will, you, you will cast them out in Jesus' name. You know, even if fear would try to come upon you because fear is a spirit and there's different types of fear, uh, spirits of fear. They will come upon you and you just cast them out in Jesus' name. It's the speaking of the word that God is going to confirm. That's why you need to always learn to reply with the word. Don't uh, uh, reply with something off the top of your head. Reply with the word because that's what God does. He comes to confirm his word. Are you all following what I'm saying? Amen. The moment you speak the word, boom, God is going to make that good. Even if you're in Jesus' name, go from here. Okay, you said Jesus' name. The authority is behind that name. And God is going to confirm the authority that is behind that particular name. No matter whether you see a manifestation of where it's coming out of a person or coming out of a building, certain places demons like, they, uh, what you call, they like that particular place. They don't want to go from that particular place. Okay. Sometimes you'll find them in churches. They're in certain places, in certain churches, certain religious spirits, other different types of spirits in the church. That's why still when you come into a church, you need to, that's why you're praying in tongues. You're praying in tongues. You're setting an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit. Are you all following what I'm saying? You can find all types of spirits in different places. Okay? But here again, Luke 10, 19 must be real to you. Behold, I give unto you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. We in Singapore, I didn't get a chance to go to this place but one time, but this is where the, we had the ministry house in Singapore. I was thrown out of Singapore, so I couldn't get back in. But my wife and staff they would stay in the ministry house, okay? And one day, one of our particular staff was coming home, and she was coming home in a, sta in a, in a what you call a cab, a taxi cab. And uh, she gave the taxi driver the address, and he drove up to the home and said, do you live here? And she said, yes. This is our house. She said, this is your house and you stay here? We said, yes. She said, yes. Well, everybody know that this place is haunted. Now, one of our students said, oh, you can live in this home as long as you like. Okay. But only to find out she was in real estate. She couldn't sell the home because everybody knew that the home was haunted. That was well known, especially by all the taxi drivers and people who lived in that particular area, okay? 
And we had a, something like we got into place. She said we could stay there as long as we like. We started uh, doing some renovation, fixing it up, and things of that particular nature so that it would look presentable. All right. And um, once we got it all fixed up and everything, and of course, the staff, my wife, they'd cast the devil out of that place in Jesus' name. You know. And so everybody knew that place was haunted. All right. And you find there are places you go to, there'll be haunted places, haunted hotel rooms, haunted places. I've uh, chased out demons in hotel rooms throughout the world, you know, that were haunted, that certain demons love those particular places. You can see that over in Mark chapter five. When you look at Legion, it wasn't so much going out of that man is they did not want to leave that place. They wanted to stay in that particular place. Can you say amen? Well, this sister could not sell it. But after we got in there and cast the devil out of there, she had some buyers. So someone bought the house <laughs> and we lost out on living there <laughs> because the house was clean. Are you all following what I'm saying? Now, you'll find like in different places. I remember, I don't know why I'm getting into this, but this is, this is all a part of your warfare. Okay, even you go into hotel rooms, you go into different parts of uh, uh, different countries and things of that particular nature. This is something you need to be aware of. You need to take authority and clean that place out in Jesus' name because you don't know what was there. Okay? And you can pick up spirits and you have sometimes spirits harassing you for periods of time and you don't know why. Well, one particular place that we moved to, and this is when my youngest daughter, she was a baby during that particular time, and someone gave her a bear. And it was a cute, cute little bear. And if you touch one paw, it would be Mary had a little lamb. You touch another paw, and it would be old MacDonald had a form. And then you touch another paw, there was some other nursery rhyme playing, okay? So my daughters would sleep in the middle of us. And one particular night, and there was a closet, I start hearing Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> Okay, playing over and over again. So I said, well, what is this? So I got up, opened up the closet, picked up the teddy bear, looked at it, and threw it down as hard as I could to see if I could get Mary to have a little lamb again. Well, nothing played. So I said, oh, well, maybe something electrical happened. So I went back and went back to bed. I went back to bed about 10 minutes later. Old McDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> so this time, I know what it is. There's a demon in this particular closet. We moved in, but we did not thoroughly clean that place out. Now you all hearing what I'm saying? So I went in the closet and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go from this place. And this great big black creature just went. Shoo. He went out. OK, so I went back to bed and went back to bed. And all of a sudden, about maybe 10 or 15 minutes later, I see this big black creature he looks like a gargoyle. How many have ever seen a gargoyle? Okay. I saw from the corner of my eye this thing passing the end of the bed, going back into that particular closet. Now, see, one of the things you have to understand, the devil will try to challenge you. Okay. He will try to challenge you because he does not want to go from that particular place. 
Sometimes when individuals, when you're casting out devils, they don't want to leave that particular person. But they must obey the name of Jesus. Amen. This is where you must put faith in the, in the name of Jesus and know the authority that God has given to you. Can you say amen? Yes. Well, he went back in the closet. Past the end of the bed, back in the closet. So I got up. I got up and I went back in that closet. The Holy Ghost is on me. He's up rising up in me. Can you say amen? And I said, didn't I tell you to go from this place in the name of Jesus? Now get out of here and don't come back again in Jesus's name. So that thing went whoosh again. But something happened. He sat on the fence. Okay. He wants to come back there. He likes that place. Okay, he sat on the fence. Now God's opening up my eyes to see all this in the realm of the spirit. And I said, nope, you don't come back in here no more in the name of Jesus. And finally, that particular thing left. Okay, he was what you call, he looked like a gargoyle. You all have seen gargoyles in some of the movies and some of the statues that they have in different places. Those are demonic figures. OK, but I don't know how we got into this. Praise God forevermore. But this is just to, to, to show you about practical ministry. You can sometimes cast out devils with people. And sometimes those things don't want to go. And sometimes those people don't want to let them go. They want to hold on to them. This is where you have to just use your authority and break the power of those particular spirits upon you. OK, but at least set the people free so that they can choose to do what they are to do. Can you say amen, which is to go with God and the things of God? Well, praise God. This is kind of going a different way today. But anyway, God is good. Can you say amen? But these particular things happen. Well, in the original state, these particular things were created in beauty and perfection, just like we see with Lucifer's. Turn to Isaiah chapter 14 a moment and also Ezekiel chapter 28, Isaiah chapter 14. The first dispensation that we know about is called the dispensation of angels. The dispensation of angels in other living creatures. And there's all kind of living creatures. God is a God of diversity. He likes diversity. Turn and look at one another. See? Diversity. Can you say amen? That's God. He's a God of diversity and he created all kind of living creatures. Same thing with angelic beings. He created all types of angelic beings, all different sizes, all different shapes, different angelic beings. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. And this is where angels ruled planets, planets, not only in this particular galaxy, but also in other galaxies and solar systems. All right. This is where on Earth, the Earth that was created then was a different Earth and different social order. It's not the same Earth that we are on. OK. You get a glimpse of this in 2 Peter chapter 3. Hallelujah. This is where many people b believe that this is where dinosaurs came from during this particular time, where certain things on the earth, certain things happened during this particular time. Okay. Looking over in 2 Peter chapter 3. Glory be to God. And... Let's go to verse 
4. Well, go to verse 3. Okay. It says, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days. Now, notice it says scoffers will come in the last days. We are in the last days now. Okay. What are scoffers? Anybody? Okay, hit it with your, with your Gmail. Mockers. People who spread lies. Doubt. Unbelief. Fear. That comes from scoffers. Okay. Denying the truth. And it says over here, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lust. Now underline that. That's very important there. Their own lust. These are scoffers. Can you say amen? When you start preaching the gospel, going out, you will find scoffers will come after you. Okay? They'll be coming to you and come to people around you and say, this is not really of God. You are not of God. Okay? All these things are not really true. Okay? They will mock. They will make fun. But these are scoffers. And the Bible tells us these particular things. Can you say amen? These are what you call signs of the last days. They will be even greater signs. All right? Let's go on a moment. Praise God forevermore. All right? Notice walking according to their own lust. Their own lust. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? Okay? It says, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Okay? In other words, denying that Jesus Christ is coming back again. And this is where you need to read verses 1 and 2 on your own. But let's go up to verse 1. Might as well see it. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. Notice it talks about your pure mind. What is your pure mind? Your pure mind. Your pure mind. Okay. Renewed. That's a part of it. Your renewed mind. See, based upon that which is based upon the word of God. Anybody else you want to add to your pure mind? Because the Bible talks about there's a difference between being spiritually minded and fleshly minded. Are you all following what I'm saying? Because spiritual, what'd you say? Mind of new creation. Yeah, new creation. Okay. The difference between your fleshly mind and your spiritual mind. There's a distinct difference there. Your spiritual... Put on the new man, which after God is created in true righteousness. Okay? You have the mind of Christ. Okay? That's your pure mind. There's a difference in stirring up your fleshly mind and your pure mind. <laughs> You're all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Amen. So he says, I stir up your pure, your pure minds by way of reminder. Now, underline reminder. I think my wife alluded to this when, well, actually, she just said it out. Don't be a know-it-all and think, I've heard that before. He needs to preach something different. She needs to preach something different. Because I've heard this before. That's one of your biggest mistakes. Because your pure mind won't be stirred up that particular way. When your pure mind is stirred up, okay, you'll find your spirit man will be recharged. And your spirit man will get understanding of what's already been preached in a greater degree. A greater depth and a greater dimension. Okay? That's what happens when your pure mind is, stayed, is stirred up. And certain things 
that you're reminded of will illuminate in your particular life. Yeah, you've heard it before. Remember, the Word of God is always giving birth to new revelations, deeper revelations, deeper understanding. Can you say amen? Opens up a whole door of meaning to you. And notice he says over here, he says, I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. Notice reminder. Never ever reject re being reminded of what you've already heard before. That's a great mistake. Okay? Because generally what gets people into trouble is they forget. And that's where James tells us not only to be, do not to be forgetful hearers of the word. Forgetful. You can forget it. Okay? You can quote it. You may be, you may be confessing it every day, but you forget it. Are you all following what I'm saying? Amen. amen. That's why you want your pure mind to be stirred up. Can you say amen? It says that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before. Under the stop there before, in this particular context, by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us the apostles of Lord and Savior. In other words, the things that you've already heard before. Hebrews chapter 2 gives us a great warning of this. Keep your finger here, man, and go to Hebrews chapter 2 a moment. Hallelujah. Verse 1, and I'll quote the old King James in here. It says, Hebrews 2 verse 1, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed. Underline that phrase, more earnest heed. Not just heed, but the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we drift away. Okay? Or we let them slip. We let them slip. Are you all following what I'm saying? See, the Lord may be telling us about certain things. He's, he's told us over and over and over again, we've heard it, we've heard it, we've heard it, we've heard it, but we just kind of let it slip. That's sometimes how people enter into deception. They've heard it, yes, but they really let it slip. And they become deceived. Are you all following what I'm saying? You can especially see that in the area of of. Jesus coming back again. No man knows the days, the time of the hour. The Lord said that, didn't he? But then you have people who will come up with a projection of the Lord. He's going to come on certain, certain day. And you have people who follow him. And they're convinced that the Lord is coming today at midnight. So bring all your money, bring all your property, and bring your car keys, your house keys, and put it on the table. And people do this. What happened? <laughs> they let it slip. Are you all following what I'm saying? Amen. They let it slip. See, in studies in, of deception, Okay. Deception gives you a false impression. You can see it. it. Comes through statement, comes through vision. Okay. But it gives a false impression of something. Makes you believe a lie. Hello. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Makes you believe a lie. And there's all kind of deception that comes in many, many, many different areas. Okay? You know what the truth says. Okay? And you still put the truth away. All right? I don't want to get into that right now, but that just gives you understanding. Keep going over the things you've already heard over and over and over again. Because the Holy Spirit many times will remind you of certain things. It'll just start floating up on the inside of you. Okay? Let's go on. Praise God forevermore. All right? 
It says, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And notice verse 5, for this they willfully forget, underline willfully. Willfully forget the truth. Willfully forget the truth. Okay? That by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water. Okay? This is what we call Lucifer's flood. All right? By which the world that then existed, or then was, as it said in the old King James, perished. In other words, that whole social order, that whole social system, it perished, being flooded with water. And notice verse 7, but the heavens and the earth which are now, underline that which are now, which are now, okay, Preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. All right. Then he goes on and says, but beloved, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand days. Excuse me. A thousand years is one day. Don't forget that. God is not bound by time. Okay. No. That's very important. When God created angels and other living creatures, many ruled different types of planets. Okay, they were in the heavens of heavens where God was. They were in the heavenlies in those particular places. And we find a certain high ranking angel over in Isaiah chapter 14, by the name of Lucifer. Lucifer. Okay? And look at Isaiah chapter 14. Have you ever thought how could something that was created believe they could be God? How something that was created was able to deceive over one third of heaven? Think about that. Are you all following what, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Yeah. Amen. That's something to really think about. Okay? And you look at Isaiah chapter 14. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And let's look over at verse 12. And it says here, How you are fallen from heaven... O Lucifer, son of the morning. Now notice he fell from heaven. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Keep your finger here. Turn over to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Glory be to God forevermore. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Starting at verse 17, Luke chapter 10. Can you say amen? Now, remember Isaiah 14. We're going back to Isaiah chapter 14. Okay. Lucifer was Satan's name. Okay. Verse 17, then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, now, here you see what we call the pre-existence of Christ. What does it mean, the pre-existence of Christ? Pre-existence of Christ is Christ being God. Can you say amen? Remember, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and nothing was made that was made without Him. Very, very important. Can you say amen? Watch any type of so-called Bible that will try to deny that. They tried to put it in a different way. Okay? And we talk about the pre-existence of Christ. We're talking about Christ as being God. All right? And it says here, He said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. 
What is Jesus telling his disciples? I saw Satan kicked out of heaven. He was kicked out of the heaven of heavens like lightning. It was no great big war where the devil and his angels were almost ready to overthrow God. And then God kind of raises up and gets him some strength. And there goes the devil a little bit. And here the devil comes back again and, and he's putting more on God. No, it didn't happen that way. Lightning means what? Fast. <laughs> God did not waste any time with him and his angels and those living creatures that followed him. Okay? You see the power of the almighty God who created the heaven and the earth and all that's in it. And Jesus says, I beheld. Okay? I saw Satan. Behold. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Okay. And then he says, behold, look now. I give you the authority. Notice I give you, underline that, underline that. I know I've said this many, many times, but when you actually get into deliverance, casting out devils, the first thing the devil's going to try to do is get you to look at yourself. You may be quoting the scripture, but you're looking at yourself. <laughs> Hello. That's right. You look at yourself. You look at the manifestation that's going on before your eyes. Okay. And anytime you get manifestations like that, spirits of fear are released. That will try to attack you and make you afraid and run away from the devil. Okay. Notice what he says here. I give you the authority. Underline the word give. Give. Didn't say to work for your authority. Didn't say to fast for your authority. Well, Jesus says this kind comes out by fasting and praying. What does that mean? That means that you become sensitive to the Holy Spirit in getting the devil out of that particular person. But you still have the authority over that person in Jesus' name. It's not based upon your own strength and it's not based upon your own authority. Generally what happens when people cast out demons a lot of times, the first thing the demon has you, number one, looking at yourself, then number two, telling you you didn't pray enough, number three, you're not spiritually enough, number four, you didn't get in the word enough, and then number five, look at the sin you committed the other day. Okay? What is he trying to do? Point to your, he wants you to point to your own holiness in righteousness. And when you're being pointed to your own holiness and righteousness, then you always fall short. Are you all still out there? Because an attack upon your physical body. You feel weak. You don't feel strong. Attack upon your mind. All these thoughts that are coming to your particular mind that contradict what God's word says. This is why there has to be such an emphasis on this word give. Sometimes in certain deliverance books, it has you doing certain things. And that's not the word of God because you're looking at your own holiness and righteousness. And I think I've shown you in here in Acts chapter three, when uh, and the man at the gate, beautiful, the demons were cast out of, and people were marveling. And then Peter said, hold on a minute now, hold on. This is not done by our own holiness or righteousness. It's done by faith in the name of Jesus. Okay? And this will say, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Underline nothing by any means shall hurt you. Because that's where fear comes in. You might get hurt. 
This demon might chase you down the street. <laughs> you know, when these demons come out of people, they get super strong. Demon may just pick you up and just throw you like you, you nothing. That's all thoughts and that's all feelings. They contradict the word of God. This is why you have to keep holding on to the word. 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 Can you say amen? Listening to the Holy Spirit as to what to do. You all following what I'm saying? I had one of our students, she's a pastor now. Praise God forevermore. She was up to her particular church. And we had this one particular lady. She was, she was demon possessed. She worshiped idols. Okay. And she came forth to receive the Lord, but she had great difficulty. Okay? So we prayed in tongues. We, do every, we did everything we knew to do. Okay? So our particular student, she prayed. We were all praying, but she heard from God. And God told her to tell the lady to bow down and worship Jesus. Okay? So she told me. I said, well, just follow her. She's got the Holy Spirit in her. Can you say amen? So we told her, lay on the floor and worship Jesus. The moment she did that, that broke over. She set free. God received the Lord, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, all glory to God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. You see, the Lord gave us the instructions on getting that demon out of that particular lady. That was more than one demon. Those were demons. Those were spirits of idolatry. And all her life is from a small child. She was dedicated to the particular idol and worship that idol all her particular life. You all got quiet on me out there. Amen. Now, I don't know how we got into that, but let's go back to Isaiah chapter 12. Hallelujah. Well, this is to stir up your pure mind. Hallelujah. So we see, it says you have weakened the nations. Verse 13. For if you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. On the farthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. In other words, I will be God. I'll ascend into heaven. My throne shall be exalted. Woo, hallelujah. Are you all still out there? Amen. Above the stars of God, before all the angelic authority, thrones, principalities, power, dominion, I shall be above all of them. I will be like the most high. Okay? Now, the Bible lets us know over in Ezekiel chapter 28. Praise God for evermore. Can you say amen? Now, that's what you call really self-promotion. Yes. One of the things you're going to have to watch out for in ministry and with people are people who are self-promoting. Self-promoting people. Okay, very important. Uh, keep your finger here, man. Turn over to the book of James. The book of James. My wife was talking about being humble. Can you say amen? You have some people, they disguise being humble as being polite. And they don't have a humble bone in their body. <laughs> They're just polite. Are you all following what I'm saying? You know, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He will exalt you in due time. 
And you're going to have some people who are what you call very self-promoting. Okay? Um, as my wife was, was teaching that, the Lord started reminding me, like, some people, they will not go to a place where there's only a handful of people. See? And that's one of the signs of being self-promoting. Because... They won't go there because there's not enough people or they use the rationalization. Well, well, I spend my time here. I need to go where there's more people that I can teach. Well, what they're doing is they want to be seen. Okay, and that's sometimes disguised by something they call wisdom. So one of the things you have to learn, and my wife is talking about the area of faithfulness. You, if God has one person there, you go there, be there on time, Preach your heart out and minister to everybody, especially with one person. <laughs> Are you all following what I'm saying? Amen. And we have met ministers that way. We've met it. We find this more in what you call American preachers than you do with preachers who come from overseas or who live overseas. Generally, they say, oh, you got a church? How many you got? How many you got? They want a big crowd so that the crowd can see them. I'm just telling you truth. You need to understand this. I'm get, I will tell you things that other ministers will not tell you. Okay? And we had a, a friend like this. Now, he only had a church of about a handful of people. Okay? This was in Australia. We invited him to Malaysia. And we had a brother to set him up, but he didn't like the brother, the way the brother set him up because the brother was just sending him to different churches and they were small churches. And he didn't want to go to small churches. He wanted a big crowd. And also during that particular time, we had what you call a prophetic congress where we had thousands of people. He wanted to speak there. Okay. So he came up with some kind of vision he had <laughs> the night before. I'm just telling you these particular things. Are uh, you all hearing what I'm saying? And he would despise going to a small church where in his own self, he only had a handful of people. Are uh, you all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And it was very sad. And one day... He didn't want to go to these churches the brothers set up because they were small churches. So the, this one particular pastor who was setting him up said, well, why don't you want to go to small churches when you yourself have nothing but a small church? Yeah. Well, this is one of those that where you've heard the saying about water going over a duck's back. <laughs> It rolls right off. Are uh, you all following what I'm saying? And it's very, very, very sad because one of the things you have to learn is you have to go where God wants you to go. Yes. Never despise the crowd because God is sending you to his people and he's sending you to people that are coming into the kingdom of God. I just have to share these particular things because, like I said, I find it more in, a, in American preachers than I do any other place in the world. How many you got? 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 Okay? And this is something called self-promotion. And self-promotion is something that you have to watch out for if you follow what I'm saying. Okay? Now, let me go over to James a moment. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me go to James chapter 5 a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James chapter 3. Go to James chapter 3. Okay. It says here in verse 14. All right. Well, let's start at verse Thirteen. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. 
But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, underline self-seeking, self-seeking. Look at me. Woo. Look at my anointing. Okay. Do not boast and lie against the truth. Okay. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist. Self-seeking. Do you see that? Confusion and every evil thing are there. One particular scripture says strife is always there. You find a self-seeking person, a self-seeking person always stirs up strife and confusion. People can be best of friends for years. When a self-seeking person come in like that, everybody be fighting like cats and dogs. You all got quiet on me out there. Are you all following what I'm saying? That's why when we talk about motives, always make sure you have the right motive. Can you say amen? And you'll find some are self-seeking. There's one particular person, and I just shared, the Lord wants me to share it, I got to share it. Praise God forevermore. They would prophesy to people for money. In other words, the Lord spoke to you, give me a quarter million dollars. And this particular person, he prophesied to a brother like that. You don't do that. You speak what the Lord says. And he, was, he wanted to be a big time evangelist. And all the trimmings that go with it. You got your bodyguard. <laughs> I'm telling you this stuff so you would know. <laughs> okay. You got your bodyguard. You got somebody carrying your Bible with your bodyguard. And they're all protecting you. I don't know what from. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling you these things. You'll see these particular things and you cannot be let these kind of things sway you. Where you're and all. Now. I'm not knocking people getting blessed, but I'm not to prophesy to you to give me a quarter million dollars. No, you're all still out there. Amen. Self-seeking. Self-seeking. Want to be seen. My wife and I would sit there and we'd just look at him. And he would have his show. You know. Well, you don't do things like that. Hallelujah. If God has you before one person, you preach to that one person as if you're preaching to a thousand people. Now, you all following what I'm saying? Paul says, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. <laughs> but you'll see this, and especially here in the United States, there's the wrong understanding and impression of ministry. Because of TV ministry, everybody wants to be a superstar. Hollywood. That's the truth. Are you all following what, what I'm saying? That's, that's the truth. And that's what people want to be. They believe this is ministry. They believe. Let me get on Christian TV. And I got it made. Let me go to these conferences and I got it made. There's that aspiring to be great. No, God is great. I mean, that's just the way it is. I'm telling you the way things are. This is things that we see in the field. And a lot of influence comes from here in the United States. And people believe they're not a success because they're not on Christian TV. You have to follow the Lord. Are you all still out there with me? Yes. Amen. 
So whatever assignment God gives you, you have to be faithful with that. I ministered in a convalescent home for seven years, every Saturday from one to two thirty for seven years. That was my flock. But God had to deal with my attitude before I did that. And I had the wrong attitude at first. Are you all following what I'm saying? And then sometimes you, you have friends who tell you you're out of the will of God. All kind of crazy stuff. You got to follow the Lord. Can you say amen? And this is where I ministered at a Baptist church for something like three to five years. Every Wednesday. And there was only five ladies there. <laughs> But praise God, I could go preach. Yes. Are you all following what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And God had me there, and that's what you learn to do. You stay there until God tells you to move. Because there's so much you have to learn. You have to learn to preach and teach. You have to learn to deal with the spiritual pressure that is thrown at you while you're preaching and teaching and ministry. All these things you got to learn. Can you say amen? amen? And see, you yourself must be, I guess I'm teaching some of your teaching that you were doing. You yourself have to be found faithful by God. Amen. Hello. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. I don't know how we got into all this. Oh, We're going to dispensations around this and this, but God has given you what you need. Can you say amen? amen. And what you're doing, treasure that. Amen. Treasure that. Never be embarrassed about how many people you got. <laughs> Sometimes certain pastors, they're, they're embarrassed. We see it all over the world. They're embarrassed. They feel that they, they're worthless. They only got a few people. They're not recognized. Well, one of the scriptures to look at, and I have to go find that, but at least I can quote it. What's highly esteemed of man is an abomination to God. What's highly esteemed by man is an abomination with God. Okay, I'm just sharing things with you. You'll run into these particular things. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. See, certain things that men and women esteem, and I'm talking about in ministry and in the things of God right now, and in the world, means nothing to the Lord. It's an abomination to Him. Okay? And this particular brother, that's between him and the Lord, he kind of despised, he despised ministering in small places. Praise God. He didn't want to minister in any small places. Wasn't enough people to see him. He wanted to be seen. Okay? Praise God. Remember, Jesus is the star. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Oh, my Hallelujah. He is the star. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. Glory. Bright and morning star. Hallelujah. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Well, did you get something out of that today? Yes, Hallelujah. Let's praise God. Thank the Lord. Thank amen. Oh. Hallelujah. Praise God.